Right, ladies and gentlemen, we have our first title bout of the evening. This for the IKF Southern Area Light Welterweight title over five two-minute rounds of full contact action. Would you welcome first into the blue corner the challenger from Hastings Kickboxing Academy, Dan Rock. Our first big title fight of the evening, the IKF Southern Area Light Wellerweight title, and our champion Matt Gear from Lox Martial Arts defending against Dan Wright from Hastings Kickboxing Academy. And again on paper, this one's a cracker. Dan Wright, an all-action fighter. Matt Gear, real quality. Seen both these young men before. And on paper, this could be one of the fights of the night again. Matt defending his title. Dan looking to take it. Hastings Kickboxing Academy really on the rise at the moment with a good stable of fighters coming through. But tonight, here at Combat Zone Into the Dragon, Carl Denny is really testing his team against tough, tough opposition, as you should, to see where you really stand. Full credit to them because Matt Gear is a legitimate champion and a class campaigner. Dan looking to rough him up immediately though, came in three, four punches straight away and a kick on the end. I said, all action fighter, but there's the clean technique of Matt Gear. Push kick time to perfection. Just as Dan was coming forward, Matt called him clean on the way in. But again, Dan looking to get inside his taller opponent and work him on the inside. Matt will have to keep him away. And again, the push kick. Defence, two offence. The front kick, longer than the jab, the leg. Great defensively and defensively. Right, roundhouse from Dan as he looks to walk Matt down. Roundhouse reply from Matt, then the front push kick. Both men exchanging punches. Good round kick from Dan, but again, Matt with that push kick. It's like a solid jab and accurate as well. Right tactics from Dan, though, he's got to get inside the longer limbs of Matt. And again, the round kick from Dan, like all Hastings fighters, very fluent with their legs. Matt using those front kicks to try and keep Dan away. Dan biding his time to try and get the round kick in, but has to eat those front kicks. Matt just out of range with the jab. Then lands again as Dan comes forward. Dan Wright said to me before this encounter, he'll have to be his best to take this from Matt Gear. He's got a lot of respect for Matt and knew it was a tough night ahead of him when I spoke to him in the changing room. Nice little right hand from Dan though. Matt responds. Bubbling nicely this opening round. Again, the front kick of Matt Gear vital in this bout. Takes the round kick on the gloves this time. Good opening round from both men. Four more still to go. They've had a real good look at each other this opening round. Two of five. Good opening round from both men. 
And it's going to be a tactical bat as much as anything else. Matt looking to keep Dan at range. Dan looking to get inside. They exchange round kicks. Matt working away behind that front kick. Dan looking for the uppercut as he gets inside the round house. Eats a right hand, then a high kick. Looks to push forward. Matt responds. The crowd for both respond again. Dan felt that right hand from Matt as it came over the top. And again, the front leg, well, the front kick, I should say, rather than the front leg of Matt Gary, he's fluid with that front kick off either leg, looking to keep Dan right at bay. Dan has to pick his time, get inside, but once you're there, you must work. Nice round kick from Matt, but Dan waited with the right hand counter. This time Matt strikes and slips out of range in reply. And again, Dan trying to close the gap, lands. Matt responds immediately. Round kick to the head of Dan as he comes forward, and the right hand to the face, catching Dan as he comes in. Dan's got to be careful, coming in on a straight line. You've got to close the gap, you've got to get inside, but you've got to give yourself options coming there. A straight line gives you the opponent the chance to go right down the pipe at you. More lateral movement when you're coming in, feints. Try and draw Matt in. Easier said than done with a good technical competitor like Matt. And again, the high point head kick from Matt, the round kick to the head of Dan. Brings it up again effortlessly. So it's a hard, nice work for Dan having to pick his work to get inside Matt Gear. I've gone with the champ on that second round cleanly this time. I thought the first, they had a good look at each other. I thought the second is in favour of our champion. Three of five. And Dan Wright must get inside and work when he's in there. Matt Gear will want to keep him at range with those long legs and chopping hands. As Dan tries to come in again, the leg finds the side of the face, forcing Dan to bite on his gun shield. As Matt uses those legs as a way in to get his man off balance and then come in with the hands over the top. And it's that push kick. A front kick that's proving difficult for Dan to get inside. Matt pushing forward again. The round kick taken on the glove for it. Well, the arm this time. That one gets through. Forcing Dan to come forward. Matt using the height advantage well here, tactically. Dan still light on his feet, looking to get in. It's not an easy job against this young man, just warned about the kick. Hit the backside, needs to come up above the waist. Let's just throw the hands over the top. Stopping Dan coming forward with these tactics is Matt Gear. Doubling up that lead leg, pushing him back, goes reverts behind the front kick again. Oh, both men went to front kick that one straight into the groin area of Dan Wright, who will be given time to recover. He's not one to make a fuss. Hard as nails is Dan Wright. So I can tell you that landed, and it landed cleanly. touch gloves and go again and Matt will chop away behind that front kick it's the right tactic Dan needs to get inside and get a variety of punches around the guard of Matt once he gets in because Matt is so fluid as you saw with those legs there turns defense into offense effortlessly when he's on form with those legs 
Force is down into action as he lands with that round kick. So three rounds down, both men didn't hear the bell, so carried away. But for me again, round three goes to the champion as well. Two left. Dan Wright has to get inside those legs and work and get a heavy hand landing there. Four or five, and away they go again. Touch gloves. And similar tactically from Matt Gear. It's a good tactic. He doesn't need to change it. He's got to make Dan work for every opportunity to get inside. Dan Wright has to get inside, has to get the hands going once he's in there. But Matt is making him work for every opportunity. Catching him on the way in and out. Dan looks to come in, but good movement from Matt Gear there. Saw the danger. There's the kick and the stinging right hand over the top of the kick again. This is where Dan Wright needs to be, and he needs to get some clubbing shots in. And Matt Gear will tie him up or move him when he's on the inside there. Better from Dan Wright. He has to maximise those opportunities. Again, Matt sticking to that tactic of pushing the front kick into the midsection and then bringing the roundhouse up high when he gets the opportunity. And again, you see, just when he sees Dan Wright set to come in, Matt Gear will move again. So Dan has to set himself up once more. So he spends a lot of time setting up the attack rather than attacking. That's not your failing, that's your opponent's good use of the ring, good use of movement and timing. This is where Dan has his best opportunities. This is the best moment of the bout so far for Dan Wright. He has to maximise it, but nice turning by Matt Gear. Throws the roundhouse on the end. For the first time, Matt was caught up there and had to taste leather from the punches of Dan Wright. Doubles up the kicks again, just Gear. Four rounds, Dan, one to go. The champion had his... Hardest round so far there in the fourth. I've still got him ahead, but Dan Wright did the right thing there. So the fifth and final round. And Dan Wright did the right thing there in the fourth, had his best round. I still think he's behind, but that's the tactics needed. Once you get inside Matt Gear, you must work. He boxed him in, kept him in the corner, and started to throw the shots. Matt saw the danger, turned eventually, and came back. He hasn't been under that much pressure throughout these rounds, and that's not because of any lack of ability from Dan Wright. It's Matt Gear's ability to turn defence into offence, move timing and keep his opponent constantly trying to set and as you saw there as Dan came in he had to eat leather again from Matt Gear and it's been a good tactic right throughout this contest from the champion very sporting contest at the same time as well just misses with that round kick the side kick's low and Pete's going to have a word with Matt is warned him twice now about the kicks coming low. Now this point down, if the judges see any of the rounds differently to me, this could put a different complexion on the back. And it's given Dan Wright extra incentive as he pushes forward now. And both sets of crowds respond. Both put big army of travelling fans here. I don't know how vital this point is going to be, but Matt could have done without it. Especially after a good fourth round from Dan Wright. And now Dan, as I said, has got extra incentive here, closing the gap. It was the third warning for Matt Gear. Pete Richardson clearly warned him twice before. And now it puts a different complexion on this. Matt getting back behind those bread and butter techniques that have served him so well during the course of the bout. 
I felt Dan's had his best successes late in the bout. Well, it's an interesting bout, two very sporting young men. My gut feeling is the title is going to stay with the champion despite that point, but we're going to find out then. Please, both your kickboxers in this ring. But we do have a unanimous decision in favour of, and still, the champion of the record, Matt Gill. I'll do my training. I'm afraid it's going to be a good 